Hello, and welcome to the next 30 of State of Decay 2, the Juggernaut Edition. We're going to do this like a sandbox survival, like I probably mentioned in the previous episode. But the other thing I'm going to mention is, this is going to be my first real LP, because this playthrough is going to take a lot longer than five episodes. And I think we're going to do each one of these in... 60 minute chunks even though i call them first 30 next 30 or whatever my original intent was to do them in 30 minute bits but games like this that are very procedural they take a lot longer clearly so it'll just be you know 60 minutes with a quote overtime built into it uh as you can see i switched over to a different character this is the military guy here and the reason i did that was because my other guy needs to rest first and foremost and I need to work on other skills. So, like, this guy's pretty close to what I think will lead to a stealth build also. So I'm definitely going to want to do that. But when I switched characters and I walked out the garage, or out the base, it told me, get my SUV running. So it gave me this quest. And I also tweaked the gamma a little bit so it shouldn't be nearly as dark. It's still dark, though. So anyway, I went into my toolbox. I found a tool set right here. And I... I think there was something in the hey, trunk I also. We left all this stuff back here. Yeah, so I've got food I can put in the base. i got fuel and, and toolboxes. I'm just going to use the toolbox that's in my inventory for now. But also, let me go ahead and drop off the food since we're not exactly low, but there we go. And it wants me to upgrade and fix the car, so let's go ahead and do that. Whip out the toolbox. Now, don't ask me where the extra doors came from, but part of the game's uh, mechanics allow for this. So I'm going to take one more toolbox, because this car was in a sad state, obviously. And then I'll repair it again. Hopefully that'll fix it. Okay, that's more usable. It's not 100%, but it's pretty darn close. And then... Yeah, we're out of fuel, too. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a gas can. That's and enough those. to get her up and run it. At least for now. And then we'll just fill up the tank. I'm getting this fuel... That bar control. over there, I'll tell you how much you're going to fill. We might want to hit some so local now the gas yellow bar is what it currently fuel. has, and the flashing white bar will be what I, I go need. For a drive, just to make sure the repairs work. Uh, I guess I can do that. I don't really want to. Okay, I'm in it. And then, like the flashlight, to press F to turn it on and on. Same thing with the headlights. And then certain vehicles have sirens or extra features. And I think that's... C is the horn. Uh, I forgot what the other button for the special is. I think it is C, but this particular vehicle doesn't let me use anything special. And then I can just hop out. Yes, you can leave the headlights on. If you walk too far away from the car, though, they'll turn off automatically. So let's back out of the parking space. Okay, it's working fine. And then it'll That's give me the tutorial on how the, how the vehicles actually walking work. walking all the time. But I don't want to use this one right now. Not for now. Driving is faster, safer. It lets me bring back a lot more supplies. That part is true because the vehicle has storage space on top of your bag space. What I'm going to do instead, though, is I'm going to carry the toolbox and the fuel, and I'm going to look for another vehicle. And the easiest way to do that is to find another observation post. So let me go over to my Firewatch Tower, since it's built into my base. That's another thing I like, is the <laughs> Firewatch Tower looks exactly like the one in Long Dark. the way it's set up and laid out. So we'll go ahead and work our way up to the top of this. Could be worthwhile to climb up and get a better look around. Yeah, yeah. See, I was sort of getting ahead of ourselves in the uh, Not first episode. Around. So now just right click and then survey the sights. This only happens the first time you I'm starting to get a things. handle on what's out here. Okay, so two houses, Some of these buildings car garage, are empty carport. The sites that likely have what we need most. Tool shed. Restroom. Campsite. Another screamer. Ranger station. Okay. Nothing more shed. to see here. 
No vehicles, huh? We're gonna have to go find them somewhere else. Fine. Yeah, I was debating on doing this as a kicking it old school, but then I thought it's really not that old. I think this came out in like 2018 or 19. Alright, so let me go to my map. I know there's a screamer here, so I'm going to target him and just go kill him now. Anything that close to your base poses a threat. We'll just hop over the fence right here. Squat down. Now, I don't have my stealth guy. So I kind of have to play this carefully. I don't see him. The heck is he? Oh, there he is. Okay. And he's got his back turned to us, which is good. Gotcha. Keep that mouth shut. Yeah, you tell him. All right. Let's find another observation post. I want to find us another vehicle. Let's see, this is travel to the military site that Grant Graham wants to claim. I think my guy was named Grant before. I don't know. This is a whole new playthrough. All right, so no observation posts here. See, I'd rather have that. But the quest wants me to go here. Fine. I'll go do that. I have a very loud rifle on me. Oh, I think morning is starting to come, too. That's good. I just noticed it got a little bit lighter. Weather conditions in this game are a bit awkward. Weather conditions in Days Gone are very awkward, too, which is another game that I thought about playing on the channel. Loved it. I just recently finished that one. I didn't, I didn't discover or start playing that game until about two or three weeks ago. Absolutely loved it. Real shame that they're not going to do a sequel. Heard it was like a developer spat with Sony and PlayStation Network or some crap. Real shame. I, I really, really liked it. It's like The Walking Dead meets Mayans MC. It's, it's, it was super cool. I don't know, maybe I'll cover a couple episodes on it. I just, I love that game. I'm pretty particular about what games I play, so. Actually, I had a friend call me out on it. He goes, man, you really like these survival games. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of do. This claiming territory just sort of plan is kind of, it. um, aggressive, isn't it? Hey, that's what it takes out here. Wake up and smell the roses, pal. Lots of army zeds around here. I guess the defenses weren't good enough. Yeah. So these guys are Don't armored. Don't wasting bullets on headshots. You gotta go hand to hand. Yeah. No kidding. All right. So hopefully I can stealth kill my way through all of this too. Because they're armored, you really don't want to waste your time shooting them. You want to do this. <laughs> We'll just let them peel out one or two at a time. Hopefully this one won't turn around. Good. Good. Actually, no, there's three of them in there. Damn. Alright, I'm gonna have to wait and see where these guys are going. Very slowly and quietly, let, just let them do their thing. Okay, you stay there. Oh crap. Looks like I got that one's attention. Yep. Okay, so what the main this guy? Guy. 
Oh crap, he aggroed all of them. Shoot. Shot the other two. I can't catch my breath. Damn. Alright. So that's just tutorial on securing the building. You can't claim the outpost until you kill everything in the area. And if you see those little squares, these are areas you have to walk over and visually uh, clear before you're allowed to claim a territory. Ain't gonna clear itself, you know. Roger that. Not too bad. Flashbang? Yeah, I never use those. Jackpot. Yep, I'll take it. Pretty good haul. Nothing there, nothing there. I've cleared out the army's ends. Get that outpost up and running. We want everybody to know this is our territory. This I need. Ooh, that's a really nice one too. That's going to put my rifle long. away. And now no I don't have room. enough space. But the solution is claim the outpost. Right? So I have enough of this prestige. It only requires 300. Take that. The outpost is up and running. Gives us the tutorial again because I got ahead of ourselves earlier. Then I can go here and open Sweet. the supply locker. Give us a nice supply of ammo. And dump now the stuff off I'm not going to need now. Including his, his gun. I don't want to carry that. This is just taking up space. So, because I like to play stealth, I'll just keep all that out. Put it all away. I need arrows, though. So now I can do this, and I can search this. And since we claimed it, the search is obviously much faster. Uh, I want the machete. The durability is not as good, but the lethality is good. So, yeah, we're going to want that. And then ammo resource. You must take it like it is. And weapon parts. Uh, you use this to break it down for those screws like this. That way you can use it for maintenance for upkeep on your weapons. Ultralight axe is pretty nice. Uh, it's got more dismemberment. But at the cost of less lethality. I want lethality. Okay, so I think we cleared this out, right? Yeah. Oh wait, there's another container over here. This outpost gives us ammo every day. Nothing left to find here. Oh. I'd have to drop something else first. All right, I can make that arrangement right quick. Let's go ahead and supply locker. That, 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 that. Actually, all of it. Screw it. Actually, I'm going to break this down too. There we go. 45 and 22. Okay. Now we're traveling light again, I think. Oh no, because the toolboxes are heavy and the fuel's heavy. It's all heavy. <laughs> Everything's heavy. Okay, I have one arrow. I'm going to need more. Now, one way you can do that is you can just craft more. Or you can just find them out in the out in the shit. But actually, what I came out here to do was find another vehicle. First time I played through this, it was uh, I barely left the area for the longest time, and then I got braver and braver and started like walking further out. So I've only got the one arrow. I think I see another vehicle right there. Yep, that's a lootable vehicle. Which is just like the one we have, but whatever. It's another vehicle. That's all that matters. So if I didn't have that bonus where it gives me water and power, I would have to come here and I would have to claim this for electricity. But I can just clear it for now. I don't really need it. 
So, like, my recommendation would be is if you ever play this, do the builder's playthrough first. Is this two vehicles? Oh my god. So, yeah, there's two of the same SUV right here. Usually, there's only one this vehicle in an area. Perfect for That's amazing. Huh. All right. I'm going to go up here. We're going to check the top of the cell tower because there's a container up there. And then I can use it as an observation post to see if there's any other vehicles around, even though there's two right underneath me. Why carry two of the same thing, right? But it's nice that they're there. They're not going anywhere. And unlike H1Z1, these don't degrade over time just sitting still. Which I thought was really annoying about that game. You'd have to log in every day just to maintain your vehicles, otherwise they would explode while you weren't logged in. I thought that was pretty lame. Alright. Survey mode. Let's see if there's anything around. Oh man, I always wanted one of those. Ooh. I bet it still works too. I'm taking that instead of the SUVs. I'll explain when we get to it. Okay. Okay. Cabin, 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 cabin. Seems like I'm done for now. Park Ranger's house. Okay. I want the survey car. It doesn't carry a lot. It's not the fastest. But the survey car is a unique vehicle in the game. It has a party piece. And what it does is, as you drive around on the map, if you're not speeding through it, it will unlock everything that the observation post can do in the area just by driving. You don't have to climb things and stop and look around the corners. So these are cool and all, but I already got one. I want that. And thankfully I've got the toolbox on me. So we'll just beeline straight there. Actually, wait a minute. I forgot. I think there's something in here. Hmm. So we got a locked door here first time. You can get through every locked door in this game with enough application of brute force. The problem is, is it makes a lot of noise. So you probably want to look around first, make sure there's nobody in your immediate area, and then you just... Doesn't seem like anyone reacted to it. And I'm dead in view. There we go. And then if you're worried about them coming, just close the door. What will end up happening is, as you close the door, they start beating on it to try to get in. Then you can kick the door open and knock them flat on their ass. Kind of nice. There we go. And let's go get that survey car. Oh, wait, did I? Yeah, I did. Okay, so it's behind us. It's that way. Still need the stealth. We've got one more star to achieve that. I'll take my time here. Go ahead and make the run. Oh crap, already? So what you're gonna notice is that guy's walking on all fours. Plus he makes a funny noise. That's a feral. They're very fast. They're almost keep my impossible from that feral. to run over because they leap out of the way. You have to really catch them off guard to get them. The easiest way to kill them is a single headshot. But they move around a lot, so they're hard to hit. I'm going to try to get him because he will become a problem. Especially this early on. Where the heck did he go? No, he's here. Oh, he's way over there. Okay. Well, I got this thing with a zoomable scope, so. Yeah, it's gonna make noise. Just kind of let him run around circles a bit. Eventually, you'll catch him out. Hopefully, I've only got one shot at this. Usually they don't do that for this long. Look 
Looks like I'm empty. Got him. <laughs> that was touch and go. <laughs> I didn't think I'd get him. Holy crap, that was cool. Now, every time you fire a bolt like that, you have a chance of getting your arrow back. You'll see the icon on the map, or in, in your view as you get closer towards it, if you can recover it. So you see that one right there? This crossbow I have is kind of overpowered, so what it does is it actually passes through the target. I can stuck there all three of these without them turning around. So there's also a skill, that the, the one that wasn't stealth, and it increases your chances of getting your bolts back. So like, if you have an ability that does that, then your best bet is just to carry like 10, maybe 20 bolts at the most, because you're going to keep most of them in your inventory. But if you can't recover them very often, then you're going to have to make a bunch of them. Usually I only carry about 20 to 30 tops anyway. If you're wondering what I'm doing is we're so close to that third or that next star trying to get that there, since they're right here out in the open. I oh, know the car's to my right too. So there's that. something either though. Oh, and if you zoomed the last time, make sure you unzoom before you, unless you want to stay zoomed. It just kind of remembers the last setting you had it at. Still won't give me that last star, huh? Let's see if there's anything in the trunk. Alright, so this is the survey car, and that's kind of like the Google Maps tracker up there. Let's go ahead and fix the car. Hopefully it at least gives me doors. Cool. Yeah, she's still wrinkled, but it'll work. And then, how are we on fuel? Oh, it's pretty low. So good thing I brought the gas. There we go. This car is really fuel efficient too, so that's kind of nice. Go ahead and take this back towards base. Oh yeah, one thing I should mention is you can run over the zombies, but if you do it too much, it'll start to damage the car. So one of the ways you can prolong the damage is you can hit them with the door open like this. And you just hold the left mouse button and then you pop them like so. It's always kind of fun. And the more you hit them, the more goo accumulates on the car. So there's that. And keep in mind, your car makes noise. So you have to be mindful of that. Let me see something. Oh, oops. Let me see something right quick. Take a quick look at the map. Now, I'm in map view, but zombies can run up and hit me, so you don't want to dick around too much. Alright, I want to go over here and see if I can spot some things over here real quick, just so you can see how it works. end of the road. 
So if I kept going that way, it'll ask me if I want to leave the map. But you have to cert meet a certain set of prerequisites to be able to do that, which we are not even close to yet. Then down here. All right, so we let up these. I don't. I haven't really checked to see what the radius of this uh, its detection range is, but now it lit up these. Okay, don't go beyond that. Though. Maybe they were already there. This is a good way to recon your map ahead of time, so it's kind of cool that they gave us this early on. Plague territory is a bad place to hang out for too long. Anything in a red outline like that lets you know that you're in plague territory. And then one of the other things which I thought was a little bit too easy, um, I'll have to find him. Give me a second, I have to run away too. Okay, you see that vapor trail up there? That's where the plague heart is. It's like it's it emanates from that spot. So you know he's in that house. And a plague heart is just a giant blob of zombie mass. And it produces more plague zombies. So, if you want to eradicate the plague zombies in a given area, you wipe out the plague heart. Once you wipe out all the plague hearts on the map, then you're allowed to do your actual story quest missions for the builder or the sheriff or the warlord or whatever. So, right here, I didn't even see it, but I drove close enough towards it where it detected that vehicle over there on the map. Probably that one already, too. And that is, ooh, a military truck, which is one of the better vehicles in the game. So now we know where it is. I'll go over here and I'll drop the survey car off. Let's see what that other thing was. Another survey car. Okay, that's cool. There's two of them on this map. Sometimes there's one, sometimes there's none. For the once, I actually got two of the same car. If you upgrade this vehicle to its next version or whatever, evolution, um, the problem with it is you lose its abilities. So I usually keep the survey cars survey cars because it has that passive ability. And then what I'll do now is I'll just head back to base and drop this off probably should have checked the condition of that truck. It looks like it was in good shape, but it might not have fuel in it. So I'll go ahead and put the survey car here in the other spot. Oops. It's fine. It says park, so I get credit for it, but I can just... There. OCD it out. <laughs> Alright, is there another toolbox in here? No. Okay, everything's put away. So now what I need is a fuel can, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to need that, uh, or I'm going to want that truck. Let me go ahead and put all this away. And... Is it in consumables? Yeah, but we don't have any. Damn. Damn! I'm going to say that in a while. <laughs> Alright, well we're going to need more arrows. So the first thing I want to do is go to my workshop, and I want to craft ammo. And down here is crossbow bolts, and it's going to require me two materials, and I have four. Oh, it backed me out because a new infestation popped up. That's a random event. Go ahead and do this. So now I have 31 arrows, which is kind of nice. Yeah. And I need fuel, so I'm going to go... We'll see what I'm going to do. The fuel is on the way to the truck. Over time. So I think what I'll do is I'll walk over here. Now there's a reason I'm doing this, because I'm going to show you that yes, you can do it, but if you move, one vehicle gets left behind. But I do want the truck. I think it's the only diesel vehicle in the game too. Like it makes a distinctive noise. Sorry about that. I needed to take a sip of a tasty beverage. 
I was slightly parched. Alright, let's see if I get stealth credit for this. My problem with this crossbow is it's so powerful it goes through the character or through the uh, target. So sometimes getting your bolts back is not an option. Because you don't realize if you got it or not. Anyway, let's keep moving. I spent my lazy Sunday having to give eight doggo baths today. And flea treatments. And claw clippings. It's a long day. Eight dogs is a lot. It sounds like a lot, because it is a lot. But, my friend Scott calls them punters, because they're Yorkshire I'm Terriers. Bloody time. So they're not exactly the biggest. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and break that down, because I get a free Molotov cocktail out of it. And what I'll end up doing is, I'm going to save that one, because there's more fuel canisters, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make this little walk. And eventually what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to come up with a lot of Molotovs. Because, for me, um, 30 cal ammo I can get, but it takes a while to ac accumulate enough of it to do what I need to do. Uh, if I find like a foul battle rifle and then I go attack the plague heart, I can mag dump I think two drum or two magazines into it, and that would be enough to do what I need to kill it. It's good to go ahead and get in the habit of doing headshots. Obviously for damage and you know attack power, but on the flip side, uh there's a thing called a light crossbow and that light crossbow only kills by a headshot so if you can just sort of train your brain and get used to the concept of headshots early on then you'll be much more successful in the long run and the hitboxes are pretty generous so like right here this you know a little hold over a little higher above the target and then there you go and since i was shooting downwards the arrow should be really close by and I got a free plague sample out of it since it's a plague uh, plague zombie. There we go. And then we'll just continue our little stroll. Let's see if I can sneak up on this guy. This is probably not going to be an arrow I'll get to recover. Because it's firing in a big arc. So you can see it traveling way out there in the distance. But it's fine, that's why we have 30 of them. Zoom in, and fire. See? That was definitely ahead of the target, but the hitbox was a bit generous. It was like a gimme. Now, you can go and attack a Plague Heart with a melee weapon, but you would die. Because when you start attacking a Plague Heart, it sort of puts out this battle cry, which calls every Plague Zombie in the region to come help defend it. And it will kill you. Lickety split. See, I only found one of the two arrows I fired in this direction. And I think the third one's gonna be out that way somewhere. Early on, I used to worry about that, but it's not a big deal. You can always craft more if you have to. So having an outpost that gives you um, building materials early, not a bad plan. See, that one hit the rock, probably wouldn't give it back anyway. But I need to kill all of these, because they aggro way more than a normal zombie. And he heard the noise, so he's reacting to it. We got plenty of arrows. For rat meow. See if I can hit this guy. Actually, let me see if I can stealth kill him. There we go. Alright. Let's look. No, not base. Not goals. I forgot the button for this directly. I'll remember eventually. Alright, so let's specialize in... Okay, so he doesn't get the option for stealth. 
So instead, I get better range, better detection, and better weapon durability, which is nice. Or, better stamina, and better weapon durability. Like, all weapons. Hmm, I want... Probably... This. Enemy detections. It's nice, but it's... Meh. I'd rather have this one. This gives me better weapon durability for all weapons, too, which is nicer in the long run. There's a bunch of them in there. Yes, that was to the left of his head. The hitbox gave it to me anyway. Kind of weak. In a way, that's kind of weak, but I'll take it. Okay, since since he doesn't have stealth, if I hit the run button, this guy stands up. That's the one reason I like stealth. Ooh, we just maxed out shooting, too. Nice. Alright, let's see what our specialties for that is. Sharp shooting, less recoil. Mmm, I want sharp shooting. more effective overall. Yeah, I saw him up there. I can't jump over that. Ooh, he left a plague sample. Towards the end game of each scenario, you're going to find that you probably don't need as many plague samples as you think you do. Because you can always just go into the infirmary when they just have the infection only. And then you can just passively defeat it that way. That arrow's not coming back. I guess this one isn't either. It's fine. Still got 23 arrows. We're good. Those will never stop spawning. Just be aware. Until you kill every plague zombie in the area, even if, even if you get rid of all of them, sometimes they still show up. They're just far less uh, in terms of sheer number. But every once in a while, you'll still see one. All right, there's the truck. I really wish I could drive these. I mean, this, this looks like a Peterbilt 281, which, if you've ever seen the movie... Duel, you'll know exactly what that is. I'll put a picture in here. You'll know exactly what that is. That's an infamous truck. It's too bad you can't drive one in the game. At least in Far Cry 5 you could. They were cool. Kill this guy since he's heading towards the truck anyway. Get my arrow back. Oh, my guy's tired. So one thing you're going to notice is my max stamina doesn't go all the way to the top now because I'm technically fatigued. Sleepiness. Uh, this truck is in good shape. I just need to fuel it. I'm going to fully fuel it. Because I got two cans. No, no, no. Get out the bed. There we go. See if there's anything inside. Oh, there's a fuel can in here, too. Alright, we're going to take this truck. Don't worry, he's going to hop in the front seat. Gotta love that diesel sound. Of the part of God's plan. I'd like to have words with him. Yeah, you and me both, buddy. Get in line. I've got a lot of things about quote the plan. I'd like to talk to him about. Ooh, gotta kill that. I'll take the damage hit. Sure. This is my preferred vehicle of conveyance. That one and. Uh, this game has a copy of the 67 Impala 
that was made famous in uh, Stranger Things. Yeah, that's in here too. Makes a good noise. All right, so here's my quandary. If I move, one of these is not coming along with us. But in terms of usability, this has a little more storage space, but I like the truck better anyway. So what I'll do is I'll just park this over here for now. And it's not going anywhere. Like the game's not gonna eat it, it'll stay there. And then if I get on my next base eventually, I'll have to walk all the way back here and pick it up and drive it back to the new base if I want. Which I usually do. I hoard vehicles in the game. I always do it. It's just a OCD thing. But at least if I move now, the truck and the survey car, because they're in the parking spaces, they'll come for the ride. There we go. So, one truck. And then there's another feature that's kind of nice. When you go into the, the storage area here, you can just press T and it'll transfer it straight into your base inventory. So like, I don't even have to go in there. I can just do this, like so. And since I only have the one, that's not really useful right now. I wonder if I can produce another one. If I can make 12 of those, I happen to know it takes 12 to kill a plague heart. It's not the most efficient weapon, but you can throw 12 of them very quickly in succession and run away before all the zombies come at you. And in the er easier modes, when you kill the Plague Heart, uh, all the zombies get killed. All the Plague Zombies die when the Plague Heart dies. But in the harder settings, when you kill the Plague Heart, the Plague Zombies are still there. They'll keep coming at you. Okay, so I don't have the means to make Molotovs yet. I think I need to know chemistry for that. And then here, I can repair my carried weapons if I had materials, but my weapons have to be damaged, which they're not, since we've been doing stealthy uh, stealthy attacks. And I don't think the crossbows wear out either. Don't quote me on that. But this uh, salvage weapon remains, you can't do anything with this, the weapons remains except salvage them, so you might as well just go ahead and do that because it takes time. So you can just set that task and run Guys, away from it. Guys, we're damn near out of fuel here. Uh, no we're not. I have this. It's gonna give me fuel every day. So, chillax. What I need to find is... building materials. More building materials. That's what we need. Oh, so he's sleepy. Let me go ahead and put him to... No, no, no. Let me go ahead and put him to bed. There's two ways to do this. I can go here and just do it like that. You know, or I can go to my community page and, and just pick a new guy like this. And I think what I'll do is I'll take the doctor this time. No. I'm going to just continue working on Eddie. So I'll switch to him because his fatigue is over. And he's got the eight slot backpack anyway. I need more crossbows and stuff. Now you can take two people with you. But in early game... Actually, you know what? I'm gonna take two people. Nice to see you're still kicking. Uh, so I can enlist him to follow, follow me. me, would you? Now Guess I have my carrying capacity and his. And if we get into a fight, he'll attack too. And I don't have to control him. He can just do his own thing. All right. So let's see. Connect with other survivors. Okay, we don't have a we don't have an actual quest target for that just yet. The other thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to go ahead and make a thousand so I can take us to this fortified truck stop. That'd be great if I can get that pulled off between this episode and the next one. That way this this LP, even though it's an LP, it just it won't drag out nearly as long. Let's see if we can find some more building materials. And when I'm stealthy like this, my other guy gets the bonus. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't trigger the other uh, guy's noise. I can just do that, and my other guy follows along at the same speed. Kind of cheap, but it's kind of like my ability helps my other guys with their abilities. Take it as, take it as you know, well, this place is take it how you empty. will. They're in there. They never come out, though, as far as I remember. 
it's just the ambient noises to kind of creep you out. There is a screamer right there. Hopefully his back is turned. Good. He keeps pivoting his body. Yeah, see how he keeps turning around? Because he wants to move. Alright, fine. We'll just go the long way around. I'm exhausted. Ooh, I pulled that off just before I ran out of stamina. You have a second before anyway, because he winds back and takes a deep breath. So you still have a chance to kill him before he makes noise. I actually want a trifecta once. What a fucking jackpot. I felt like the biggest champ on the planet. Bit of a gambler now? Bit of a gambler, are you? Guys, I feel like there's no bet we couldn't win and no ass we couldn't kick. So each character eventually, when they become a hero, they play into a certain role. And the four roles are builder, trader, warlord, and sheriff. And obviously that guy. Well, he should be pretty predictable for you if you don't know what he's going to play into, but he will become a warlord. I don't think there's any materials in this place. Yeah. Static display only. So we need to find building materials, because we have stuff we need to build. What do we have here? I know someone who could use this. Yeah, more stuff to take apart. This is a weapon mod. Light bolts, but we have no light crossbow. Not cool. So that's that crossbow I was talking about where it really requires headshots. Uh, ooh, there's another bag. Maybe we'll get lucky and have a light crossbow in here. Nope. Cooking skill. Is that all the lootables? It appears to be the case. Alright, let's go start hitting up the houses then. Alright, man down. These are almost gimmies. <laughs> I dismembered this one zombie one time. I took both of his arms and his legs, and all he does is he rolls over on his back and just makes a bunch of noise. Because he can't gum his way towards you. It's kind of sad. And again, it's never say die, too. So, like, obviously this game sort of takes a lot of inspiration from elements of, like, The Walking Dead, right? And the one thing that I always had an issue with was, in The Walking Dead, don't you think you would smell the zombies before that you saw the zombies? Now, there is this thing called being scent blind, and yes, you can. You can become acclimated to a certain smell, so your brain turns off for that. But, like... I own eight dogs. Not alone here. And oh, I gotta get that guy before he stands up. Here they come. There we go. Anyway, um, what was I at? Oh yeah, you can become sun blind, but you know, like I have eight dogs, and last night I guess my dog had Indian food, one of them, because he went over to the pee pad and he dropped a deuce. And I was I was dead asleep, and the smell of that deuce on the pee pad woke me up. I was like, well, I guess I better get up and do something about that at like four in the morning. So, yeah, I don't think you'll ever be uh, sent blind to decomp. There's just no way. You would have to be superhuman to do that. No freaking way. Don't want to jump through the windows because broken it's glass easy, makes a lot of noise. Watch their step. All right, 
right, let's see what we got. Clear the house. I have some building materials on me, which is good. Maybe we can trade this to someone. Well, we can always use more. If you see the little bar, like, squirt up a little quicker, I actually take some of the calculated risk and speed up the searches. But it's a chance on hit that it fails. So, like, right now, I'm just whoop. And I chicken out at the last second to stop. I'll just to see. That'll bring him running. Alright, so now anything in the area is gonna come after us. Like that guy. Let him jump through. And then I can stealth kill him. Oops. I can't see a damn thing. Actually, that wasn't bad, because we need to work on our other skills anyway, like fighting. So I guess... It won't work. Oh, you're not going to let me stealth kill him? Because you hit him with the bat. All right, whatever. It's done. Oops. First aid. All right, since we cleared them out, another noise would trigger more, but it would take them a lot longer to get to us. Let's go ahead and finish this Really out. enjoy the peace and quiet while I can. I used to wonder if they got better at their noise management the further in you play, and I what don't do have a definitive answer for that yet. Let me access your inventory. I'm pressing Q to switch between my two guys. He's got empty space, so what I'm going to make him do is I'm going to make him a mule. You're going to carry stuff that I know I'm not going to get a bunch of. There. You can carry that, too. Just dropped off some goodies. Hope it helps. That is a uh, random event. So, like, your colonists eventually go on supply runs on their own while you're not this place playing is empty. them. Better move on. All right, cool. We have two Molotovs now. All right, so this house is clear, plus we have building materials. We did the whole thing on foot. So let's go ahead and get back to base. And that should probably wrap us up for this episode. But I'll go ahead and build the next thing. So cardio, obviously you see my stealth is, or my stamina is just ticking down. When you build up cardio, that's, that uh, progression of fatigue slows down. You'll always have it, but the rate at which you lose it. Like, they really thought this out when they developed this. I, I'm pretty impressed with that. Just gonna keep on running until the stealth runs out, or the stamina runs out. And then just stop, let it rebuild, stand up, and do it again. So the stealth run isn't as fast as the standing run, clearly. Okay, and we're back to base. Build facilities to expand our home. I will do that. So now we need to consider what we need next. I got a successful this. run. Uh, let's see. I have an outpost that gives us ammo, and I have an outpost that gives us fuel. So the only thing I can build that's going to give us a bonus is a garden. Yeah. So we'll do that, because we're going to eventually need food. And that's going to take some time, as you can see. That that building bar is slow. What it does is it takes one of your colonists, and he'll run over there and start working on, you know, building the, the actual out, uh, the feature of your base. So what I'll do now is I'll just drop all this stuff off here. And what do you want? I'll just switch to oh, that yeah, character. Yeah. So now I'm in control of Eddie. Day, or no, I'm it. Or this is not Eddie, that's Eddie. And I can just dump off what he's got on him, like this. Check the weapons and upgrade him to the crowbar. Speed is decent. No, we'll give him the axe. When you equip from your locker, it just puts the item right back in the locker, which is kind of nice. And you need a primary weapon, but I don't want you shooting things yet because you just generate noise. Oh, hey. So we'll switch back to 
Eddie, Graham's gonna come in tow. And then I'll go ahead and, oh, we're not done demolishing the last set of stuff. Okay, fine. Uh, how are we doing on reputation so far? Six ninety-five. So we still need more. I need to destroy that, but I need someone who knows chemistry. I think it's. I need somebody who knows chemistry, or maybe I just have to upgrade the workshop. Let's see if that costs six of those and. Yeah, fuel bombs. Okay. So, I need five circuitry and six building materials. So, we need to find a building that has electronics in it. I think we're going to take the truck this time. Let me take a good look around right quick. Scrap circuitry. I guess I should check the power substation. Let's see if that has any. I doubt it's going to give us five, but let's go take a look anyway. I've noticed hitting fences doesn't really do anything to the vehicle. Of course, I don't deliberately aim for them all the time either. Oh, wait, it's here. We're here. Oops. <laughs> it's okay. He'll open the door on his own. Hopefully. There we go. Scrap circuitry. More scrap circuitry. Nice. This is the right call. -hoo -hoo -hoo. Yeah. That stuff's not usually easy to find. Okay, Whoops. run or fight. Ooh, toolbox. Uh, we're gonna fight. I think we attracted two of them. It's okay. It's gonna be okay. Having them come to the door, there's a there's a trick to this. See? So if I blow the door open, it knocks them on their ass. Gotta make sure it's dead. There we go. What do you want? No no, I wanna check the trunks of these vehicles. Ah, okay. How about the other one? Wow, look at all this stuff. Nice. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, we got room for it. Locked. Right, anything in here? Okay, I already cleared this. It's funny that it locked itself twice. Oh well. Whatever, it's fine. This looks like a waste of time. Alright, so we already got everything here. Let's go ahead and drop this. Oh, no, no, no. Save the toolkit. Got a passenger! Did you guys see a passenger? I didn't. I scraped him off like poop on your boot. So anyway, we already cleared overtime. We're about to hit double overtime. But we'll be back at base just in time. Speed the fuck up, dude! I don't have to. We're already at base. Relax. I'll just drop it off this way by hitting T. There we go. 
I go check the back of this truck now. Already emptied it. Hmm. Fan. I sure like to believe that things are finally looking up. So he's building a garden. Let me see. What do I need to upgrade this? Six materials. I kind of need to do that because we need another outpost. We're going to need another outpost. I've only got room for the two right now. Yeah. Which is fuel and ammo, which is not terrible. You can also do your upgrades through here, as you can, can see. Really use more materials, people. But I don't have any. We need more materials. She says so. Either way, we're out of time for the day. So, this was the next 30 of State of Decay 2 Juggernaut Edition. And like I had said in the previous episodes, we're going to do this as a sandbox survival type playthrough where I kind of explain things as we go along. Um, and then once we finish this scenario, then we'll try to ramp up the difficulty because I've already played it on normal enough times to more or less master it. Which is, it makes for good viewing, but it doesn't make for challenging viewing. Anyway, if you're new to my channel, welcome, but if you're a regular here, welcome back. Either way, check out my other playlists and see if my other interests might be of interest to you. That's all I've got for you today, but I'll just keep recording, we'll keep playing, and we'll see you on the next 30. Later.